What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Joined with my buddy Wolfie. Good Wolf gang in the house. Jamin, we're playing against him. We're on the same table as him, so we'll try to mix up some hands. But uh, yeah, back at the win. I mean, there's really no other place to play besides here right now, at least 2-5 wise. Games are always good. It's ridiculous. Games, games are really, really good, as you can tell from the past vlogs. But um, yeah, running up 1,500 cap, big stacks. Nothing else to do. Let's get it. Let's get to the hands. 5K stacks at minimum. Let's go. Okay. We're not stopping until we hit 5K. Woo! Let's get into it. Hopefully enjoy. Smash that like button. Rocking the uh, luck box merch, obviously, of course, bringing the run good. And onto the hands. Woo! We see a familiar face here at this 2-5 game. Jamin Burton's on our table, and let's get involved right off the bat in this first hand with Ace-5 of Diamond on the gun. I raise it up to $20 first to act. Jamin on the button makes the call. The big blind comes along and calls, so we're going three ways to a flop of Queen-7-5 Rainbow. Multi-way, we've got bottom pair, so we have a piece of it. I throw out a C-bet of $20, and only Jamin on the button calls, so... Let's go for it. Let's battle it out vlogger on vlogger. The turn comes the three of diamonds. So we do improve the nut flush draw along with our bottom pair. Gonna semi bluff at this point. I fire out $55 hoping to not face a raise. No raise here. He does continue with a call. So we're off to a river. Let's try to improve. The river is the eight of diamonds. Runner, runner, diamonds for the nut flush. So pretty dirty against Jamin, but definitely going to bet bigger now to target all Queen X holdings. I size up to $225. He thinks about it for a little bit and ultimately does end up making the call. We show our nut flush and he mucks. Nice little suck out against Jamin here going runner runner for the nuts. Probably against some Queen X holding that we definitely needed to improve against. The very next deal, picking up 10-9 of diamonds in the big blind. There's an only on straddle here, so when the action folds to the small blind who limps, I'm going to put in a raise to $50. Only on player folds, small blind makes the call. Off to a flop, which is pretty similar as last hand. It's queen 10 7 rainbow with one diamond. He checks to me, and with middle pair, backdoor diamonds, I throw out a bet of $40 this time, and for $40, he makes the call. The turn is the three of diamonds, so now when he checks to me, Definitely can go for the runner runner flush again, but I decided to slow down and check this one. Think that instead of betting here like last hand, checking makes the most sense. So I checked this one for some pot control. We're off to a river. The river is another bink diamond. Once again, back to back hands. The diamonds are treating us well. Now, this time he leads for $105. This player looks like he has around 700 behind. So definitely an easy spot to raise. Hoping he has two pair or some sort of holding like that that can call. I size up to 450, sizing up a little bit here against this lead out. And sadly, he thinks about it, but ends up making the fold. So didn't love to see that, but diamonds and the runner runner flush treating us well to start. In this next hand, we pick up ace nine offsuit in the hijack, mixing up my range a little bit here. We see two players who limp, who seem to be limping very wide. So given we're in position of them, I size up to a raise of $30. Only one of the limpers make the call in middle position. So off to a flop of ace, queen, three, all clubs. He checks to me and with top pair on this monotone board, I'm going to throw out a bet of $40. And with this $40 bet, he obliges with a call. The turn is now the five of clubs. So four clubs out there, not loving the situation. When he checks to me, easily going to check this back with top pair, not expecting our hand ever to be good, but let's see. When the river is the ace of diamonds, pretty unfortunate sight to see as we do improve to trips. Now he leads into us for another bet of $125, almost the size of the pot. With these large river bets, they always seem like the opponent has a really strong hand. And even here with a nine high flush, we block some full houses. I guess against some players, the blocking full houses is definitely a good candidate to turn into a bluff and raise, but not against this specific player. I don't think it'll work too much here. So with a nine high flush, not going to do much here besides just letting our cards go and fold. Unfortunate here with trips along with the flush, but we let it go. In the next spot, picking up pocket jacks on the button. There's a hijack open to $15. Action folds to me, and you know, 15 is just a little too small for us to play with this specific hand. I throw out a raise to $50. 
action folds around to the hijack, who decides on a call. So going to a flop, which is probably less than ideal, it's ace-queen for all hearts. Two overcards, and even though we do have a heart in hand, it is the second nut flush draw, so pretty confusing spot to be in, but when he checks to me, I think the best play is to just check this one back. We have some showdown. We do have a heart for some draws. We just check it and see a turn. When the Tartan card does come, the 10 of spades, we do improve to a combo draw now. But now he throws out a bet of $105, another pot-sized bet. Seems strong or pretty much a strong bluff. I don't really know. Anyways, I think we have a really good bluff catcher, but we have a bunch of outs to improve on. Any king, any heart seems okay. So I make the call with a few outs to look for. Let's see a river. The river is a queen, not great at all. So when he checks to me, I think we're just going to check this one back unimproved, take this hand to showdown. Don't think we can bluff out any top pair holdings or flushes. So I check it back. He shows us ace king off suit, no heart in hand. That's going to be good enough to take it down. Nice hand, sir. Following that spot, an orbit or two later, we're back on the button. We have pocket sixes. This time there's a hijack open to $15. Next to act in the cutoff, Wolfgang here, our buddy. He three bets to 45. In position here, uh, I don't love just cold calling three bets, but with sixes, good spot to set mine. We're in position. I make the call, and everyone else actually folds. So heads up, battling out against Wolfgang here. When the flop comes, 10, 9, 8, 2 hearts. Definitely seems like a better flop for me opposed to him, and definitely good sign of that as he checks to us. Definitely going to start betting now with sixes here. Um, definitely just fully bluffing with a board better for my range, it seems. So trying to rep some stronger hands on this board, I throw it a bet of $35, and he makes the call. When the turn comes the jack of hearts and he checks for a second time, it seems a little unlikely that he's going to have many flushes in the spot, so I just discount all of those. He does seem to have a little bit more queen x holdings like ace queen or pocket queens compared to me so i decided to check this one back uh, i was repping some sort of two pair hand or set on the flop let's see what happens on the river the river comes the ten of diamonds a very dynamic river card to see and now when he throws out a bet of 100 dollars seems like a feeler bet seems like queen x most likely and considering that our range consists of a lot more two pair holdings that now potentially have improved to full houses. Can we ever fold out those queen x straight holdings? I have a lot of boats in range theoretically, and I think we're going to attempt it with sixes here in the spot. We're going to put a lot of queen x and straights into tough spots. So I put in a raise this time to $450. This definitely is an under bluff spot, so definitely want to try to take advantage of that. And now he thinks about it for a while now. And he doesn't look happy about the situation, but says he's going to have to pay me off if I have it. He does end up making the call. We show loud and proud pocket sixes for pretty much nothing on this board. And Wolfgang only shows us the nut flush, ace deuce of heart. So nice hand. Never saw that one coming. We even put nut flushes in a pretty unfortunate and hard spot to be in. But, you know hard to fold that out wasn't really aware he was that strong but nice hand checking back that flop and allowed me to commit to that bluff and punt trying to rebound from that last hand we pick up pocket tens under the gun i raise it up to 20 dollars, and we get the cutoff to make the call this is jamin here in the spot going to a flop of ace nine four rainbow ace high board should be better for me opening early so i just throw out a very small bet of 15 dollars he makes the call for 15, and we're off to a turn. The turn comes a 10. Bank City turn. It just seems like wherever we're playing against Jamin, we seem to run really well and suck out. So now hoping he has an ace X holding. I size up to $75, and he makes the call once again. So seems like he has a strong ace potentially, or maybe even two pair now at this point. We're off to a river, which comes a jack. Now we're definitely going to continue sizing up and polarize. I size to $250. Unfortunately, this time he folds fairly quickly, but still always nice to turn a set when we're probably behind. This next hand gets a little fun and dicey. We're playing six handed, so we're under the gun or in the low jack here with king nine of spades. Definitely a good hand to raise up, so I size to $20. We get the cutoff to three bet us to 80 and action folds to me. 
Given we're out of position, King-9 of spades just doesn't play too well in 3-bet pots. And I think this is actually a better spot to 4-bet. Definitely better to 4-bet opposed to calling. Folding, obviously, is definitely a play that can be done, but that doesn't seem too vlog-worthy. We're going to go for the more aggressive route and apply some pressure if he is 3-betting a little bit light since he can do so since we're short-handed. So I elect on a sizing of $225. We're playing also extremely deep, so 4-bet bluffing can be profitable here. He makes the call, playing about 25 to 3k deep. Let's go to a flop. The flop comes ace, 10, 3, 2 diamonds. Well, one of those flops where we arrive with absolutely nothing, king high and a dream. I throw it a bet of $175 with absolutely nothing, and now we have an easy decision when this player raises to 420 don't even get a count. There's no need to go for a count. I just snap muck this one and fold. Time to reload once again, but nice hand, Samson. For the last spot in this session, this one once again gets a little dicey and hairy. Let's get into it with ace, 10 of spades in the small blind. There's an early position limper. The hijack raises to $25. Now, player to my right on the button. Wolfgang here, our buddy. He three bets to 70. All right. Well, seeing all of this action, we have a strong hand to play, but calling in the small blind seems like a nightmare to navigate this hand with. So let's go for a raise. Another four bet incoming, cold four ball it to $230. Action now folds back to our buddy Wolfgang on the button who decides on a call. He covers us by a mile as he's been crushing this session. Let's go to a flop which is pretty interesting. The flop comes 987 rainbow. Obviously a pretty good flop for our specific hand. Not amazing for our overall four betting range, but definitely going to need to continue with a bet. So I size to $275. This in hindsight seems a little bit larger than ideal because if we face a raise on this board, then we're kind of feeling miserable, but when he does make the call, we have two overs. We have an open-ended straight draw. Let's try to get there. The turn comes a six. Full rainbow on board, and we improve to what is essentially the nuts, but the second nuts now, lo only losing to jack 10. We get there, and this session seems to be all about sucking out against our friends, but getting there with the straight, a very disguised one at that, I size up now to $650. With this large bet, it shouldn't really make too much sense. Now I'm hoping he has a really strong overpair or set, essentially. But when he thinks about it for quite some time and ends up making the call, we've got a really big pot brewing. Let's just try to see a brick river. The river comes the ace of diamonds. Oh, this is not one of those brick rivers we wanted to see. If we were bluffing with a hand like ace king, which we definitely could be, now we don't think we can get max value against smaller pocket pairs as we have one of the strongest hands we can ever have here. All one pair holdings are feeling really unfortunate and uncomfortable. And considering that we have about $1,200 behind in our stack, I could certainly go all in, but this river isn't one of those cards to do it with. I size up to $800, not an all in, but still a sizable bet at that. Now our buddy Wolfgang goes into an eternal tank. I look at my timer of the, how long this hand has taken, and it looks like it's taken 10 minutes total. So definitely taking his time to think out the whole situation. This line of mine certainly makes no sense given the runout and given how this board is played. So definitely putting some one pair holdings into some really tough spots. At the end of the day, he does end up making the fold not getting paid, unfortunately, but a very good fold by Alex, whom you will never believe what he had in his hand. If you want to know what he had in this hand and his perspective, go check out his channel, Wolfgang Poker. Posts a lot of great poker content like on this channel. Highly recommend you guys checking out his perspective and video and, you know, drop a subscription as well. Wrapping up the session here. Uh, I think myself and Wolfgang are going to head out to the Gold Nugget to recreate the magic that happened last time we were there. So hopefully things go well, but to wrap up this session, 
absolutely bananas. Crazy. 2-5. It's uh, it always... I think the win 2-5 is like literally the best game that I could play in. I love it. I'm comfortable in it. I don't know. The games are fun and it is what it is. But uh, today we somehow finally racked up a W after uh, sucking out or at least playing the very, very loose ace-10 hand. We were in the game for 3,300. Out of the game for 36-35. So uptick going up. Things are... I don't know, so far, so good, because obviously we're rocking the luck box merch and things are going well with that, but hopefully enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you made it this far. Obviously, like I said, a lot more bangers to come this Vegas trip. So if you wanna see more, subscribe, it's always free. Road to 100K subscribers, let's get on to it. See you guys next time, peace.